Yeah. Oh, hey, welcome into the basement. My name is TJ. This is a welcome back to Blockchain Basement, the best daily streaming show on Twitch. We're going to have a really good time for you guys today. We do have a special guest. I do see you guys in the chat already talking about it. Crypto 20 says, special guest better be Eric Voorhees. That would be awesome. I love Eric Voorhees. He's definitely one of my favorite people in the crypto space. But no, the special guest might surprise some of you guys. It's not... Probably not what you're expecting unless you really know what's going on here. Well, what up to everybody in the chat? We've got Goat V Sack, Manawa, Crypto Thorn, Riddle with Puns. Hey, welcome back, Riddle. Razmataz, Crypto Tony, Sofa King, Cryptic, PUBG, Mobile Ramen. Yeah, we're all eating ramen these days trying to save up for that uh, Bitcoin. Uh-oh. I guess it didn't. What you did didn't work. No. We, still, we still got glitching going on. We got CPU issues. You made it worse, I think. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not blaming BJ, though. It just it is what it is. We're going to figure There's definitely some CPU issues going on with this computer. So welcome in, everybody. We're going to have a really good show for you guys today. We've got some of your crowd favorites. We've got Derek, the Crypto Taco, uh, or Taco Alien Crypto, or whatever it is. One of those. Uh, uh, AJ Wright's Crypto, <laughs> Ali Lee, Biscuit Jesus. Are we in focus? Not really. Uh, not really. So, yeah. um, no, so talk, talk, I got it. I got it. He'll get it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we got a lot going on here today. I actually do have a little bit of a hard stop here in, at two o'clock, so we need to roll through some of this stuff. Uh, but it's going to be a fun show. We're going to have a surprise guest from, uh, like I said, somebody that might uh, might get you guys pepped up and excited. So uh, we do. Oh, I won't. I guess I'll. Yeah, code to my screen for a second. I'll hit the charts before you get up. We do have a little bit of price action holding above pretty good above 21.3 right now, up about 2%, 10% on the week. Ethereum at 15, almost 1,600. Uh, we were debating a little bit in the research group about uh, what bearish narratives remain. I know you, I think you guys touched on it yesterday. Uh, I'm not sure, but the uh, Genesis Chapter 11 bankruptcy is officially filed. So now that is put to rest. That was one of the last big scary things that a lot of people have worried about Grayscale. There's no concerns left about uh, Digital Currency Group having to liquidate any of those trust assets because Chapter 11 bankruptcy of Genesis protects, uh, you know, protects them from having to roll that stuff back up. Uh, they are, oh, hey, got N Hit Network Gaming raiding with a party of 24. Thanks for the raid there, guys. If you don't know Hit Network Gaming, please go sure to check it out if you're a gamer. Uh, they do a lot of mainstream games. They also do some Web3 games and stuff like that as well. So uh, what up to Hit Network Gaming and crew? Thanks for joining us here today. We're going to be talking about some crypto, maybe learning you a few things. So uh, like I said, it's going to be it's going to be fun. So we're going to just jump right into it here since we got to roll through. We've got Trader Main and, you know, pretty i'd say pretty decently sized trader when it comes to this stuff he says and this is very true if you've been on crypto twitter very long you kind of know this is how it goes if, if the price pumps from here everyone will say i told you so if we drop those same people will say they're buying the dip this is the ct way they are never wrong don't let the noise affect you make your plan for all potential scenarios and then wait to execute if this then that and i did talk about that we have talked discussed that uh I think earlier in this week, we there's a lot of different noise going on right now. A lot of different opinions. Everybody's saying we're going straight, you know, bullish, or we're never going back below 15.5. You know, I think we're going to have some time to accumulate in that range. I know I've shared what my plan is, uh, but uh, any of you guys here, how do you feel about the general sentiment uh, and that strategy of? Making a plan, if the price hits here, I'm going to do this. If the price hits there, I'm going to do that. And then the conviction of actually sticking with it. No, I don't play League on a Mac. I'm not really a Mac person. They just We're actually going to change this computer out. But uh, uh, go ahead, AJ. Yeah, definitely going with a if-then scenario is like kind of setting your, You're setting yourself up so like you can't be wrong either way. Um, I definitely p feel like people should like focus more on their pre-trade planning, like drawing the channel, drawing the triangle, running the Fibonacci levels, seeing like where the volume is, where it's going to be, et cetera, et cetera. So when, see, I always tell the chart that it's, I always say like, I'm waiting for the market to give me a signal. Like I'm waiting for this to happen to make a trade. Like for example, I watch like the uh, ES1 exclamation point, which is the, hey, sexy. Yeah, come on. Come in. sit on my lap, yeah. baby. Here. You're looking hot. Oh my goodness. Good God. Lord almighty. Oh, oh Lord. my God. Are those things real? Uh, you know, ladies have to cross their legs. Oh, God! Oh, man! <laughs> it's a good ad we're on. Good. Yo, let's go, boys. Oh, where did you... <laughs> wait, wait. Wait. All right, so... Uh, wait, wait, wait. You gotta... You gotta... Uh, you can sit over here if you need to. Or Dude, something. listen. Yeah, everything's just showing right now. I love you all. Go check out Hit Never Gaming. We do dumb shit. I love you all. <laughs> okay. That's fine. All right. That Thank was you. it. That was a special guest. All That's right. all we get. So he got cool. embarrassed. He got embarrassed. He was no, blushing. He just did the bomb and I oh, he just oh, ate the bomb oh, hot sauce. No. And he's absolutely dying Ouch. right now. 
Wait, wait. That was Should hilarious. Tacos traumatized. traumatized. That was solid. What's, what's, uh, Prime Muty wants to know what's her at asking oh, for a friend. Can you, yeah. Can you load up five, five to bombs? No. Uh, no. Uh, I'm out. No oh, way, on. bro. Onlymans.com. Onlymans.com no is her at. Uh, if you want to see more, check out Hit Network Gaming. Mm. Uh, <laughs> He's been posting feet pics lately, too. I'm in. Crypto it. Thorn. Oh, my goodness. You guys are out of control. <laughs> I'm not so. sure those are feet. So, anyway, yeah, technical anyway, to, analysis. Yes. Right. So. The, he's right. Like setting it up with if then statements is like a good way to go. Like I personally like to make straight up calls if I think like, uh, you know, in the past I said like no way the bottom's in. Like I stood firm, the bottom's not in, and I was right about that one. But if I am wrong about something, I'm not going to go delete the post on Twitter. I'm going to own the fact that I was wrong. So that's like definitely a thing is that people like everyone wants to be right all the time. And the fact is no one's right all the time. Cause if you were, you would uh, be on a beach and not on Twitter ever. So um, yeah, so definitely own, own your mistakes, set up your pre-trade plan, like have a plan and then like be able, like you have to be willing and able to jump in and out of the market. And I know that's scary to do sometimes, but you have like, when you get to the point you say, all right, I'm going to sell when it gets to this level and then it hits that level, like stick to the plan. Stick to the plan. Yeah, what exactly. Do you think, Taco? Uh, Crypto Thorn says he officially has 2,000 algo. Way to go. Hey. Uh, let's see. The only direction is for sure it's not going left. Yeah, that's a good one. Riddle with puns. So, hmm. th I mean, that is true. You need to make your plan. You need to stick with it. I'd like to, uh, yeah, I am shoveling food, guys. Come on, give me, I got to eat sometime. But, Taco, do you have a plan in place right now? Like, I know obviously 20K is a pretty hot number. We're sitting around 21, what, 22 ish right now. Do you have a plan that's like, okay, if the price hits here, I'm taking this action. If the price hits there, I'm taking that action. Are you accumulating? Where's your head at throughout this market? So I've been in crypto for a few years now. I was I was in the last cycle, so I was able to buy low, sell high. Nice. Um, this upcoming cycle, uh, the bear market, I pretty much sat on my hands. I mean, I didn't really trade. I didn't really buy anything because I felt like we were still going down. After we broke past 20K, that's when I started DCAing every week. And I just cashed out my 401k from my old job. Nice. So I upped my DCAs every week. And if we do get that like black swan event, if we get under, I think it was like 15.5. Yeah, I got, I got cash on the side ready to deploy. Nice. And they're going to be going into Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Algorand, HBAR, I mean, I got a big list and I, I break it up like the biggest are like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, and then it just kind of trickles down from there. Yeah. But I'm just going to be doing that for this this whole year. Yeah, much. that's so a you, solid plan, man. And so it, you're DCAing still and you have dry powder on the side where if we get a dip, you're making a big move in. Yeah, Correct. and I'm also doing different things like uh, ApeCoin staking. I'm doing sandbox staking. Um I think I'm doing a few other ones, just very small, and I'm just keeping an eye on them, making sure they're not going to, like, I'm not going to lose my position and, like, lose all my crypto, so. Yeah. It's, yeah. So uh, I think it's a pretty good strategy for just making that, like, a sandwich a day. I'm making a sandwich a day with ApeCoin. There you there go. There you go. That's, yeah. Well, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, um, like, right now with the price action, it's definitely, you know, obviously everyone knows since the new year, since the ball dropped, we've gone basically straight up. Every The market just changed its mind, and here we go. But what's kind of scaring me and that I kind of want you guys to see is that, all right, so I use the stock market, the ES1 exclamation point, the E-mini futures chart to make, to see what's going to happen with Bitcoin. And then I use that and Bitcoin and dominance to see what's going to happen with altcoins. So... The ES1 exclamation point is currently in a broadening descending channel and it got rejected. And that is, it, it, it could turn around and retest it again. But since that got rejected, if it starts to put in a lower low on like a three hour time frame or larger, I am going to start looking for short positions if it gets rejected again. Yeah. Uh, Taco said this, uh, Manawak said, or somebody said, Taco needs his own DGen show. Uh, what He's up, basement? What up, the Zeus? Weeks. What's that? Hey, hey, uh, I've seen that comment a few times. Yeah. Hey, maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. Never Stick know. Around. Stay you never tuned. know. We always have more shows coming out. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, my plan, generally speaking, I said I've been moving, I've moved pretty heavily under 20K. I do have a fair bit of stuff on the side that I was hoping I would get. I had buy orders in on that dip the other day. I was hoping it would dip back below 20. It, it kind of bounced off 20. You know, the low 20s didn't get back into that 19 range, at least on the exchange I was using. I know it did on some of the uh, futures exchanges, derivatives, that sort of stuff. Like we were looking at CME, it did come down and pretty that wick did pretty much fill that CME gap. Not to the dollar, but it felt filled most of it that we were talking about 
whenever that was, my days are all running together Monday or Tuesday. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to take my own advice. I, I'm just <laughs> going to throw it in there. I think I told him today, just spot by wherever it's at. I don't care if it goes, Send it. Yeah, I don't care if it really goes much below at this point, you know, and I feel like we're going to stay in a pretty tight range this year. I do think to AJ's point, there's possibilities that we could dip back below 20 K. I feel like there's a lot of people waiting to buy right there and it's going to get snapped up pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll stay a lot most of this year, which you guys have heard me say over and over. Most of this year, I think we'll stay in between 20 and 28 with some some breakouts in either direction. Uh, I was we were talking in the research group today about bearish narratives, and I don't think there's real there are like bears will always find bearish narratives. There's always a narrative out there to match your bias, you know, regardless of your opinion, regardless of what market you're talking about. You can have confirmation bias, you can go find it. But there's, in my opinion, not a lot of major, major things left that are relevant that could cause a 30, 40, 50% drop from here. I mean, even, even a 30% drop from here is, I think is still only retesting or from 22 approximately would only be retesting that 15, five level. And I just, I just don't see it, especially with, um, what we have here with the earn stuff. I'll t touch on this real quick. Uh, this is Tyler or camera Winklevoss talking about, uh genesis Ch global capital uh filing for chapter 11 bankruptcy and he goes through a pretty a fairly long thing explaining what it means now if i'm fairly certain i've read that this is a pre-packaged bankruptcy so if that's the case that means they already know the results of a lot of this stuff it's going to go through a lot faster that means i think we're going to start to shift from people losing funds and going unsolved to gain getting a portion of their funds back whether it's 20 percent, 30 percent, 50 percent, 80 percent you know whether it's voyager customers starting to get some of their funds back or earn customers starting to get some of their funds back, which again, the bears could take that and spend like, Oh, these people that had their stuff locked up, they're going to be mad at crypto. They're just going to market sell it as soon as they get it back. I'm not sure that's the case. Uh, that could pr create some selling pressure, but still not anything close to the billions and billions we've experienced lost. That was what caused that dramatic drop to get us here. So mm. I'm starting to feel, and I, I know you guys covered yesterday, a lot of those economic points as to uh, how and why it's actually like all the banks are, you know, all the headline and mainstream media is still screaming recession, still screaming fear, fear, fear. Mm -hmm. But the numbers aren't really reflecting as dramatic of a scenario as uh, the headlines are. And that's kind of markets tend to front run reality in a lot of different ways. So I think the markets, you know, got hit really hard last year. And yeah, we're going to feel a lot of that effects in our day to day life this year as the market's starting to recover, and then we won't feel that recovery again for another year. Uh, thank you, Karate. I, you know, welcome my, me back. Yeah, I missed you guys. I always miss you guys. I had to do C12 yesterday, so I only do that once a month. But, uh, and so this came in, and I tend to agree with this at this point. Like, White House Economic Advisor says the Fed Reserve is on a path for a soft landing. And, you know, I'm, I'm starting to believe this. I'm, that's what I'm seeing in the numbers as well. Like you guys were looking at yesterday, inflation isn't, you know, is starting to flatten off. A lot of these things are starting to come down. The yields on the bond reserves are starting to get back into alignment with the way they should be. Not saying it's rah, rah, everything's going to the hill. You know, like we're not pumping like crazy. Don't take me wrong. I'm not saying we're running back to all time highs, but I think we're through most of the pain in the markets in reality unemployment stuff obviously is still going to be we're going to see that number go up which again is bullish for markets it's not it's going to people are in the day-to-day -day will feel it when they are losing their jobs and their groceries are more expensive and their gas is more expensive than it's ever been that being said i don't think it will continue on that track because we are starting to flatten off uh, and we do have a lot of the treasury buybacks which is kind of a way of easing you know, economic easing without printing more money. So I think a combination of all of those things are bringing us back in for a soft landing. I don't typically like to believe or listen to anything the federal government says about anything because they're usually lying. But, oh, hey, Corey. Uh, yeah, he said gets rowdy when we're not here. Yeah, that's okay. You got to let him get him get a little rowdy every once in a while. Corey, why are you telling on us, man? <laughs> Come on, and, that's, that's my boss. Keep it down. Yeah, bro. Keep it down. That <laughs> always happens when the, you know, when the boss is away, the mice will play or whatever they say, or the cat's away, the mice will play. Or, mm. Yeah, but uh, the mice, huh? Yeah, thanks for the hoodie. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to. Uh, well, yeah, uh, I, I'm not woke. I don't identify by an animal. Sorry. Not yet. I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised. No, we have my litter box here yet. Oh gosh, he's a cat. 
Why can the cat talk? We do have a cat. We do have a cat in the chat always, just so you guys know. The, mm. Not the cat in the hat, but the cat in the chat. And he always has something to say. Shout out to you, cat, if you ever see this. But I like uh, that. More White House propaganda. Like <laughs> prop Gandalf. Prop <laughs> hey. I, I just watched Lord of the Rings with Jade a couple days ago, so I'm like totally in the Shire mindset right well, now. So time? thanks for that. Well, thanks. No, no. We oh, like, okay. I, I saw the, the Hobbit trilogy for the first time. Gross. I'm uh, sorry. It was kind of bad, but uh, kind of? I like the, it gave you a lot of fan service, a lot of Easter eggs, a lot of uh, explanations. I think Karen uh, Kinsler right. would have done a better job with that movie. I completely disagree. Uh, well, well either wrong. way, he set up a perfect transition for me. Thank you for that, AJ. We're going to go to this tweet from Gandalf. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> what? Jamie Dimon said something stupid about Bitcoin again. Surprise. Big surprise. No, Jamie Dimon, uh, when he speaks, it's generally for his own gain. Uh, I think the other, I don't, he said something really ridiculous about uh, Bitcoin. He also came out and claimed, he said literally on a, in public, FTX is decentralized. He said a decentralized crypto lost all this stuff. And it's like, no, a centralized exchange committed fraud. Well, be honest don't say stupid crap i mean it's very frustrating yeah. when these people come out and they're they're touted as bright mind you know like obviously jamie diamond if you guys don't know uh president ceo of uh uh jp morgan chase uh, one of the largest banks they have obviously a, what he says has a lot of impact in the financial world uh but all of his takes on bitcoin and crypto Generally pretty stupid. And didn't he say once there's 21 million Bitcoin that Satoshi's face is going to pop up kind of like this? Yes. And then he was like, let's not even talk about it. Like, why are we even wasting no, our no, time? No, 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 no. That's hilarious. What from the? Jurassic Park. <laughs> That's great. Great movie. They don't make movies like they used to. No, I mean, they don't. Classics. They're just going to remake them over and over. Like, oh, hey, we can just make $100 million if we just remake the same thing. Just digitally remaster and release. I heard they're going to remake the entire Harry Potter series, which is insane. What? what? They might Already? make it a TV show, though. It's it, coming in like four or five years, I heard. Interesting. Insane. Still feels too soon. But to <laughs> your point, TJ, uh, you know, Jamie Dimon, like, you can't teach old dog new tricks. That, I think that kind of applies to this conversation. And also, like, so crypto is a threat. I said this on uh, around the blockchain uh, la last night. Like, crypto is a threat to the legacy system. Like, crypto is what is going to bring down, like, the empire of the past. And, and, He's the CEO like he of JP Morgan like he has to say that. Like in no situation and he's like yeah like don't keep your money within our yeah. bank go <laughs> go put it in bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah, he would totally be the guy to say that. So he's he's kind of playing the part he has to play, yeah. but I do agree with um uh, one of someone in the chat. He's an ass hat. I think that's proper that's good. Good. Um, good well, there is a there. there's an expression there. I, I I I'm paraphrasing. I don't know exactly, but it's basically something like a man. It's hard for somebody to understand something that they're economically distanced. That you know their their job. Kind of what you were just saying. His job depends on him not understanding this. Right. And if he does understand it, it threatens everything he knows and like the world he's in. Yes. And this is what frustrates me. J P Morgan is deep in Ethereum, and yeah. they so like. His company is investing in a lot of this stuff. They're moving in a lot of this stuff, but then they'll talk bad about it publicly in front of other people in order to, you know, this is the literally definition of FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. They're trying to spread fear, uncertainty, and doubt so they can get better positions for themselves and make more money. And it, like he said, it's greed, it's incentives, it's, it's very frustrating to me, in my opinion. And huge shout out, everybody, uh, give a give a rocket in the chat to Chemistry Bro. He says, what up, Basement? Just finished my PhD thesis submission review today. Hell Has some drinks. Now yeah. I'm effed up. Let's Welcome go. to the Basement. This is the place Let's that, go, yeah. Chemistry Bro. If you're Congrats, effed up, Chemistry this is bro. the place for you. Nice. This is where you hang out with Good your bros, job. get hammered, and talk about crypto. Wait, does that it. mean Chemistry Bro is going to come visit us? Yeah, I mean, he's a doctor now. You know, we wow. need some. We need I, some I need a fellow nerd. Yeah, come on, Preach. chemistry bro. And Manawak did ask earlier if I figured out getting uh, getting you guys into the stream yet through Discord or something like that. The answer is still no, guys. <laughs> I, I'm really I, there's a lot of things to do, and I just haven't made that one happen yet. I'm sorry, uh, but hey, Q1 maybe Q1 goal. We'll make that a Q1 goal. How about that? Totally. And Mike can come visit too. Uh, this was something that was interesting to me. Speaking of institutions fudding crypto while getting exposure to it. Fairfax County, Virginia pension funds exposed to Genesis bankruptcy. So there was two pensions funds from the county that had invested $35 million in Van Eck's fund listed as a Genesis creditor. So Van Eck, we know major, major uh, hedge fund out there, you know, similar to BlackRock. And there's a lot of other things like that where they're saying terrible things about crypto while investing in it. And you don't usually hear about it until something like this collapses. And it's like, wait a minute, 
they had that much exposure you know like we know the uh canadian teachers pension fund was wrapped up in ftx now we're hearing you know virginia pension funds wrapped up in and pension funds obviously represent a huge amount of wealth and dollars that could be flowing into the system post my number yeah i'm gonna post my number yeah man no he was saying for chemistry bro to post his number so you can call him and put him on speaker that's what he was saying gotcha so, well no, nobody no. posts your phone yeah, don't, do that. don't do that uh because yeah that you can, you're mean, gonna we get vmix call him in yeah we can we do uh, have the technology yeah we just got to get it set up and organized we don't have a call Active? scene do we yeah oh okay oh yeah that's right we did with evan that yeah. one time yeah. Okay. Well, we can we can get that stuff going. We'll I'm get the goodest boy sometimes. Yeah. BJ, you, he has he is he's doing a great job sometimes. setting all this stuff up. So, uh, but that's something to keep in mind, guys. And this is, it comes back to the same concept of sticking to your plan and your conviction and trying to trying to weed out the noise because they're going to tell you things that are the opposite of what they're doing. So act with conviction, take your own actions, um, and you know get rich. That's what we're all doing. Or die here, trying. So. Or die trying. That's right. Go broke. You know, swing for the fences. So. Uh, but don't get wrecked. That's not financial advice. So we'll hit this real. Well, we don't even need to read this. We got the we got the headline of it. Boom. Uh, this, I agree. This is from the Druth Prepper Crypto. This this is what the elites are selling. I ain't buying. I don't know if you guys saw this. They're basically they've moved on from global warming to planet extinction. <laughs> They're based in this again. The, one of the primary motivators for humans throughout life. If you want to get humans to do stuff, make them scared. Fear will will motivate almost all people more than anything else just like they did in 2020 they told you you were going to die if you didn't do x y and z a lot of people did what they thought was they did what they thought they had to do to save their own lives and they're doing the same thing here uh i mean i don't we can play this i guess you want to listen to yeah, this yeah i, I want to listen uh yeah i, I, listened to it I haven't seen day. it and in i want to i want to make a comment on the video too ah! oh god where's audio that's that's me, me. hold on hold on time time, time, out. time out no ah. It's okay. it's okay. We're gonna go into that. I forgot, I forgot to, do to do that, that before. before yeah. All right, all right. Now we're now ready. ready. Boom. boom, boom, boom. Crisis. We are now facing something deeper: mass extinction, air pollution, undermining ecosystem functions, really putting humanity's future at risk. This is a planetary crisis. This is a safety crisis, but above all, it is also That's a scary. justice okay. crisis. Many areas in the world are uninhabitable. That's a lot. This well, uninhabitable well. zone is increased. So, so they're, they're trying, trying to, to sell, sell that, that most, most of the, of the of planet the is uninhabitable. Many, in many parts, they use very specific words. Many parts, sure. There's places in Antarctica. There's places in the Sahara Desert. But if you spend much time exploring, there's so much land that is very inhabitable that is not in danger at all so you know if all this is so true don't they have massive profits to actually fix a lot of this and they not doing sure it? do imagine yeah. that that's cute imagine that yeah they sure do then buy those gas emissions then by 2070 as many as three billion people will live in uninhabitable zones yep. So they're, so saying, they're saying by, by 2070, 3, 3 billion, which is, what's the population? Approximately um, 8 billion. I'm going to say 8, 5. Yeah. That's so, crazy. you know, a third of the world, they're saying, is going to live in uninhabitable areas. And I think they missed it at the beginning is when they said we're going extinct. This is not a climate crisis. We are now facing something deeper. Mass extinction. We're facing, we're facing mass extinction is what they're trying to tell you. And if you don't do and you don't buy and you don't use their products, we're going to go extinct. Even though there's tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of empirical data that says otherwise. Yeah. And their proposed solutions are what sh has shown to be causing a lot of the problems that they're trying to, they're claiming to prohibit. So, you know, basically what he's, what Drew was saying here is this is what the elites are selling. I ain't buying. I tend to agree. Uh, pay, yeah. Dude with, dude, what does mine say? He says, pay me. Yeah. Pay to stay safe. If you right. don't, if you don't get on board, you're going to die. Yep. Yeah, so I just, I just wanted to add real quick, you know how we say like when you're like trading, you're looking at the charts, like when in doubt, zoom out. So when you're looking at like the climate crisis, and again, I'm not an expert at all, but like the ebbs and flows of the world and how it goes like hot, cold, hot, cold, we're just in a little bit of a hotter like period mm -hmm. of time. So if you zoom out and it's not just in like one lifespan of a human, like over the course of like thousands of years 
we're just in the ebbs and flows of how the how the earth warms and cools itself. Like, right. I want to ask them about the younger driest period. Like they're exactly as you're saying, like things ebb and flow and a lot of these core samples like based off of where are you grabbing the corn core samples? What are the depths on those core samples? The fact that it's like 10 people that actually look at these core samples, like there's so much relevant data here that I think is kind of being omitted. Like what TJ's talking about. Exactly. Like valid empirical data. Like what is that original data? Because that kind of is everything. And Why also these numbers. Like it's kind of one of those things like when you want to get to a certain conclusion, if you have like your end game planned in your mind, you're only going to look at the facts that you see that support your thesis. You're going to not look at everything that goes against what you're saying and being like having you have to be that's not fair it's super biased is what i'm saying it's not no yeah, what just no chemistry bro's opinion on this? Uh, he says he's uh, he says that he doesn't agree 99 percent of what we talk about he agrees with but he said we've destroyed 90 percent of the wildlife in the last 200 years i haven't seen no, that. that that is a lot of this is valid like we are screwing stuff up without, without a doubt but like certain things with temperature where they claim it's never been this hot and it's like yeah there have been fluctuations but yeah we need to stop screwing shit up like we do need to get a lot better with this like we well, do have options to pull away from fossil fuels which we should do we have the money we have the technology we're just not doing it well my point is it's not as much is it happening or not it's i think the solutions they're proposing and the, the actions they're taking to prevent it are actually making it much worse uh with with a lot of the mining stuff that happens with a, and, and, and the Melikovich cycles that he's bringing up are relevant as well. What's that? The Melikovich cycles. I didn't see. I don't. I'm not seeing it. But. Also, like Crypto Thorn pointed out, they all got there on private jets. Like they're not. You know, if they really believed, I right. think what they were saying, they wouldn't do that. Yeah, I agree. They're they're. It's just it's uh, intellectual dishonesty is kind yeah. of basically the core of what I'm saying. I'm not saying there is no problems. I'm saying. The way they're proposing solutions is uh, not being the most honest and transparent. A lot of the th actually, like, I'm a big believer in nuclear. They are not, you know, like, and that could solve a lot of these problems, but they're not going to pursue that until they figure out the, the uh, monetary business model for it first. And they're going to make a lot more money doing this than they are doing that. They've been kind of going through these cycles for a long time. Uh, my biggest thing is I'm, I, have seen the actions and the steps taken by the World Economic Forum, and I've seen the effects they've had on humanity, and they're not positive. So most of what they're selling, I'm not buying. Uh, I liked what somebody else said is, no, the fact is we are going to, everyone is going to die, and that's true. And if you try to prevent the inevitable of death, you know, like we're going to die. Humans, we're, like I'm going to die one day. You're going to die one day. You're going to die one day. And I think that should be very motivating. We've yeah. got a limited amount of time on this earth to make an impact and to make a change. You need to do whatever you have the most conviction for to make the world a better place the way you think you can. For me, I think it's buying Bitcoin. I think the biggest thing I can do to make an impact on the future of my generation is exit the financial monetary system, exit centralization, exit the things like the World Economic Forum trying to have control and do things for the greater good in their opinion of the betterment. I'm going to make... I'm going to make my own decisions on what I think will impact the world for the best. And I'm going to take those actions. And I would encourage everybody at home to do the same thing. You can form your own opinion, just like with crypto, just like with research. Like we don't tell you, you have to buy this or you have to buy that. You can do your own research. You can form your own opinions and you can take your own action steps in a way to improve the world in the best way you see. I want to tangent for one second, just because while we're talking about this, this is what uh, chemistry bro is talking about with the cycles that a lot of people don't talk about is specifically like, axial precession and all the tilt. So it's like getting closer and farther away from the sun and basically that objective center point that varies that people are like, oh no, it's this, this, and this, and this is what's rarely brought up. So if you guys wanna actually research this, it's the Milikovic uh, orbital cycles. Yeah, and, well, and uh, hold on. Uh, Riddle with Pun says telling everybody they're gonna die isn't that motivational. It should be. It should be. Yeah, it should be, <laughs> I agree. Well, what's the point of life if you don't die? Like, I, I know that becomes a very boring, well, not boring, but a very philosophical question. But, oh God. This is where, this is, this uh, is, uh, this, this is, where is where I get this I from. Get this not, from. I don't I'm make not. any of this stuff up. I'm stealing it from Gary Vee. So, but here you go. This is, this, this is, is, this is, this should be this a motivation, should be motivation right, here. right here. Gary Vee! <laughs> hey. Three, uh, three words. Hey. Give me inspiration for any day I'm throwing down. Three words. Three words. You're gonna die. 
Yeah, that's inspiration. Do something about it. Do something about it. I fucking love you. I love you too. I mean, yeah. And he has he he'll uh, he'll go on and talk about this a lot more. But uh, that should you know like basically that. you've got a finite amount of time to take action. There's a lot of people that do a lot of talking. There's a lot of people that will share a lot of opinions. There's not a lot of people that will take action and try to make an impact. And that's something we are really yeah. passionate about here: turning influence into impact. Uh, and that's why we do the show. That's why we share all this stuff with you guys because. The biggest impact for me in my life was getting into crypto. And I would say probably most of the people in this building, they're taking action steps towards not just talking about it, not just thinking about it, not just chatting with their friends about it, but like, you know what? No, I'm, I'm going all in on this. I'm yeah. I'm putting, I'm dedicating my life to learning more about this, to taking this action step that I believe in. And it completely changed my life. I would I would imagine uh, AJ and Taco and BJ would ha and Ali would all have similar uh, stories. Like my life is completely different now than it was before I was in crypto. So yep. uh, hopefully that can be inspiration to you guys. Uh, like Sam OG <laughs> Rasmus says. Nick as, tells us what we as have the to thing buy. in Russia intensifies. Won't affect crypto. Won't it affect global uh, conditions? Like that's the other thing they don't talk about. It's like you think dropping all these bombs don't. Oh, shit yeah. up. I mean, come on. That's, oh, no, that's no, what I'm talking. That's fine. But right. like, that's what I'm saying. Recycling. It's pure intellectual dishonesty. And that's <laughs> really the frustrating part. Like, I don't mind people having an opinion in, in, in even the World Economic Forum. If they have conviction about what they talk about, that's fine. I just get pissed that they I, I feel like it's very dishonest. A lot of the information they present uh, and it's for their own gain. Uh, totally. so yeah, totally. it, uh, what's a curveball you guys hit, hit me with a curveball. Well, has throw anyone it at me anyway. seen the Mr. Beast, uh, Lex Friedman interview that yeah. happened like last week? Yeah, I haven't. So one part of that interview, they're talking about like life expectancy and Mr. Beast thinks that we can potentially get up to maybe like 200, 300 years old. Absolutely. Yeah. In totally. our lifetime. So I think so too. You have, a, you can basically telomerase regulation. Uh, general changing of methylation with epigenetics, so turning on, turning off certain aging sequences, uh, clearing out, they're known as senescent cells, so messing with sirtuin pathways. And then there's another one, it's, I think it's C38 pathways. But depending on manipulation with those, you can make cells cancerous. But there's so much stuff here. You can look at a lot of Dr. Sinclair's research, which I know I've talked to Ali about, but like the feasibility of elongation, yes, I said elongation, of life to hey. those points is extremely feasible. Mm -hmm. Now, do we want that? And also at that point, there's so many other socioeconomic, socioeconomic questions that we have to start asking. And those are the debates I wish we were having versus the ones that are going on. And then, uh, yeah. Randall Scott says that's how the zombie apocalypse starts. <laughs> I mean, not yeah, I'll be good. We, I can kill the shit out of like, some zombies. I'm just saying. Like, why don't we talk about we are in the transhumanistic era right now and nobody's talking about it. Like, we have the ability for personalized medicine. We have the ability to customize pharmacogenetics and we're doing none of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Why? Why don't we just start downloading our consciousness and start transferring it into different sleeves and we can live forever like well, in... Uh, what well, is it, what altered is carbon? And like at that point, you have to look at like what Roger Penrose was talking about, where you can look at uh, their, oh my God, I'm going to blank on these. Uh, it's a certain organelle and neurons. Feel that battle That's somebody's going to say. But nonetheless, um, where there's interactions in the brain that supposedly when you're asleep and dead, uh, P Roger Penrose discusses this way better. But it's almost these weird fluctuations that disappear. And it's like, is that the seat of consciousness? And can that be replicated? Yeah, that's what that's kind of my favorite microtubules. I, that's what I meant. There you go. No, that's why there is a show called Altered Carbonite, and they kind of get, it gets your mind going about that because they basically, you know, they define consciousness as basically all of your memories and your life experiences up until this point, and they've got them all on a disc. Mm. But it's only the like once you hit the end of your life cycle, basically once your body breaks down, only the you know, well off people can afford to keep buying what they can call new sleeves and right. transferring their consciousness over and over and over. So they've got a whole like landfill of those discs of people's consciousness that could be re you know, turned back on at any point if they could afford a sleeve. And so like the loved one doesn't really have any closure because there's still this hope that they can bring them back. It's, it's very fast. So like, when do they really die? Where, you know, like it's very, it's trippy. And then there's religious stuff that comes involved with a lot of that. It's, it's, well, if everything's just energy and energy can't be created nor destroyed, do you ever die? 
Exactly. That's that's kind of the that's the premise. <laughs> you know, what is what is that energy? Are we all just part of the light force? You know, so just uh, that's a that's a topic for another day. This is def this is a crypto stream, not a. Uh, I'm done derailing. Religious I stream. Definitely a existential. But shout out to <laughs> real Mister Crypto. Uh, another raid today. Two raids in one day with a party of three. Now that's hey, you know, yeah, three's a party three is what is they say. Party. So. Yeah. Uh, Thank Red you. flaming HFC. If Bitcoin continues to pump and alts two to three X as a result, should we expect alts to retrace to these current prices upon retracement of BTC or better to buy now? Uh, I would say if Bitcoin continues to pump alts two to three X and then Bitcoin retraces, alts will retrace lower than the prices they're at right now. That's just my experience with what I saw in 2019. Bitcoin pumps. Yes, the alts will pump. Uh, when Bitcoin dumps, the alts will dump more dramatically if, if it's consistent with 2019. That's what we saw over and over and over. That's why I keep saying you have a long time to accumulate throughout this year. Yeah, blockchain, blockchain basement. basement ayahuasca, ayahuasca edition. Ayahuasca edition. Yeah, Word. Gonna, those are going to be the weekend ones. You know, we got to go out in the woods and find a shaman I in a TP or something. I will never in my life try that. I no. Oh, I thought you were about to say again. I thought you were about to I did it once. No way. We just all I'm outed out. ourselves because I'm there's no out. way you should know how to say that word. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to... Uh, that that trip to me. What actually. is his name Actually's now? It used to be Nye. What's his, is it Function? Zero X function. He's an NFT guy. Uh, great stories about uh, he did a whole spiritual journey and did the whole ayahuasca thing. And uh, <laughs> what a guy. What a guy. Uh, all right. I'm out. All right. We got, we got to move on here. Oh, shoot. I've got one minute. Um, Who are we swapping in there? I, I, I Whoever. Wait, what? I, I have to. I have a two o'clock. Um, oh. All right, we got. Okay, I, I'm gonna hit this really quick because this is in the title, so I definitely have to say the security incident. SBF got wrecked today. Not the way you think he might have gotten wrecked. Uh, he's actually pretty good at manipulating prices of crypto, so he's probably part of this pump right now as long as he has internet access. But security incident as a car rams into barricades outside the home of SBF's parents' house. A lot of people know that's where he's been held up. Uh, news of the breach emerges as the media outlets push for a court to reveal the identities of two anonymous co-signers who have committed their wealth to... Oh, this is about the bond. Um, SPF's legal team, blah, blah, blah. I don't really care about any of this stuff with him anymore. I just thought this was crazy. People obviously mm. very upset. Ramming uh, his house with a car. Like, that's, that's pretty dramatic. Uh, I, I do not condone this in any way, guys. This is not the best approach and best way to do it. So, uh, sad to see... This happening, uh, but I understand the upset nature of it. I did want to touch on this really quickly. Uh, I know many of you lost your life savings uh, once, but how would you feel like two times? Uh, this is SBF. I think you guys showed this yesterday. His tweet talking about Mr. Ray finally paying lip service to turning the exchange back on after months of efforts. Uh, it's interesting to me here because there are a lot of big, big heavyweight traders that really like the FTX product and used it very well. Um, you know, then this is somebody else saying John Ray realized he's sitting on a gold mine as long as he doesn't commit fraud. And that's there's a big difference between a business and a product. And, you know, they, they go together. You need to ship good product and run a good business. They had shipped a good product. They designed and engineered a good product, but they were clearly running a fraudulent business. If you can now, obviously, they've got insane reputational damage that I don't know brand wise if they can ever recover from possibly over time. But the product itself is good, um, and I got to go. <laughs> See Bye, guys. TJ. Good luck. Peace out, brother. Talk about it. Nick Carter talks about it, too. A lot of big traders trade remain. Nick Carter, we're getting into it. Oh, Read some of the quotes on this next one. Where the fuck yeah. did Drew come from? <laughs> he's, been, he's been hidden here the whole time. Came from the of hell. <laughs> Welcome. Whoa. <laughs> the truth. Hey, you thought you could shake me, didn't you? Hello, everyone. <laughs> so, yeah, someone tried to ram SBF's parents' house. Um, you know how much it's going to cost for my bumper to get fixed? It's what? going to cost like probably like twelve hundred. Your bumpers broken yeah, my now bumpers, too. My bumpers, I don't know, man. I what's that? No, see, Jada said she uh, she had to go to her friend's house in the middle. I think it was Jada. Jada I ran the house and you the, the car was crashed. The and I um I think it was Jay. Not cool. Yeah, Not cool yeah. to tell her You're gonna like have to that. talk to her, Allie. You're gonna I mean, have to sit her down. And then we got BJ's I'll bumpers. Cheers. Oh, look, it's Drew's here. Is that you, Drew? Dude, Ooh. that might be, but I'm not that suave. <laughs> I'm definitely not that suave. I barely even notice when I'm getting hit on. So, um, yeah, I don't well, know. You're getting hit on by all of us right now. Am hey, I? Drew. So here's the you're here's the deal. Hit on by Do you think uh, people will <laughs> want to put their money into FTX if it gets revived? 
Dude, would people, you put your money on the FDX exchange if it gets revived? I wouldn't, but the right. basic population, just, you know, regular retail people, they have a really short attention span. Um, you know, people that are involved in looking at crypto right now, we're DCA and we're building these bags while everything's on fire. And we, this is fine. You know, this is fine. This is what we're used to in the crypto markets. Um, but the regular retail investor, they've been hearing about crypto and they see that it's a resurgence and, you know, they're going to come out with this sort of certification you know they're going to have more bigger publications kind of give them the green stamp to go ahead so absolutely uh to answer your question yes we are going to see a lot of regular day-to-day -day people um utilize this exchange if it's able to kind of rise from the ashes yeah so, so we touched on this at uh blockchain basement i'm mean, gonna excuse me uh, around the blockchain yesterday yeah. and like um a couple of the other people on the panel were kind of like yeah, like totally. And and like I have said this about a bunch of different situations in crypto is that in crypto, you have to have a short memory. Yeah. But how short are we talking here? That is something I've said over and over and over yeah. again. And like at the end of the day, the reputation is tarnished. Yeah. And unless you need like unless you're a mega whale and you need that like alt ultra liquidity to get in and out of the market, like normal retail people like at, at the FTX product wasn't this mind-blowing innovative it was, innovative, a, it was, it was the easy same, to use it was though. a normal exchange it was easy it was to a use. normal exchange yeah binance is easy to use coinbase yeah, is easy you to could use. get stocks you could get a slew of different things but, through FTX. but it wasn't it wasn't anything like that special it wasn't straight fire like it was just another exchange in my mind yeah. and my bit is like with a reputation that tarnished like 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 people ask ask me like do you think the ftt coin it could ever get back to ten dollars like well, if it gets revived, of course it will. But that doesn't mean I'm going to buy it. That well, look what's mean... happened to Solana. Solana's not dead. You know, yeah, I but mean, I'm not trading it. Right. You know I, what I'm saying? I don't know any, like, but it's still there. I don't know. I, I know. know from like an inside view on how corrupt the whole FTX thing is. Yeah. And uh, just know I'm out. Man, I'm I mean, out. it's all over the place. I mean, you see like, you know, these owning conglomerate companies, they have their fingers all over the place. Like DCG, yeah. for instance, owning Coindesk. Right. Yeah. Um, they Don't are. Don't we have an article about uh, Hosky maybe buying that? Well, the sexy Hosky. Uh, he is so Hosky. Sexy. But, uh, Daddy you know, Hosky. I feel like they might be able to get away with it and fool a bunch of people if yeah. they like change the color, change the Absolutely. actual name. Absolutely. But if they keep the like same e format. FTX. Yeah. This guy, uh, yeah, that'd who, be a good, who brought uh, this rename. up? The yeah, I mean, uh, Battle Toads exactly. Stocks and crypto, Robinhood, um, easy access stocks and crypto. Even though you got like ten crypto options, you still have a ton of people um, that utilize that. Um, I want to ask you guys a question. So, yeah, like, right. uh, depending on like, well, actually, not depending. If you can use any exchange you want, which one would you use? For me, it would be Binance. It has everything. It works. It has trusted. For exchange for what? For accumulation? For buys? anything. For for your on ramp. Like I use Coinbase because it's my on ramp. I live in the yeah. US. Mm -hmm. I can't use Binance. And why would I use Binance not US? I mean, I already have Coinbase set up. Yeah. But back in the day I used Binance before they had like um a geo tracking and mm -hmm. like you can't use in the US. Yeah. It was awesome. It had every coin and back in like twenty seventeen, that's what you wanted. You wanted to be able yeah. to buy all the coins that you know no one else could buy. So yeah. Uh, I got the Binance app and it was awesome. And yeah, now I have ETH stuck on there because I never got the email telling me, oh, oh you're not going to be able to use it anymore. So great. That's, yeah. only, that's my only caveat. That's why I never emailed me. Bittrex for the same reason. I could only get Cardano on Bittrex. So that's mm. where I started. But I think having multiple exchanges is probably the best way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, exactly. Coinbase, Coinbase is my on ramp and my off ramp. Um, I hold everything for my long term bags. That's all in Ledger. Uh, I trade between uh, KuCoin and BitGet. Um, I, I have a Binance, but I don't use it. I used to use um, the Binance, like the EU, uh, yeah. and I would just run a VPN because it had a couple of coins that uh, I couldn't get anywhere else. And then I kind of got out of there um, because Jada's cousin uh, was doing the same thing. And then she logged into the account without her VPN on, and it got locked, and she had to go through this whole process to get her crypto all. It was a nightmare. Yeah. And uh, I be careful King. with that stuff. Look at I be me king. I was gonna say this uphold. I use uphold. I love uphold. Yeah, I've um, heard of that one. Coinbase, good on and off ramp. I use the same as Taco. And then I, if I'm feeling, if I drink, 
and I'm drunk, <laughs> then I'll get on Femex and do some longs and shorts Femex. and stuff. Usually it's uh, emotionally driven uh, leverage trading. Never would have guessed. Yeah, you wouldn't guess that from me, I'm sure. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, and I never put in a, I plan, I go into that situation expecting to lose it, you know, just to see where it goes. Nice. Um, but yeah, on you know, the more. You know what's like the best scenario is? If you can get a decent amount of money, just funnel it through an exchange onto like a uh, cold or hot wallet mm. so that you can do um, like decentralized exchange trading. Like Dude, Uniswap, do you, yeah. do you think, Swap. Yeah. Here's a question for you guys. Do you think that with all the centralized exchanges doing um, these folds over the past year, we've seen just absolute bloodbath so are we going to see a resurgence or really the uh the chance for decentralized leverage trading uh to actually take a big foothold in the markets i hope so i mean apex only has a few trading pairs and their yeah. usdc pairs which is yeah. pretty cool but um that's that's the one i would use for decentralized uh, they will have more pairs eventually that's kind of what i'm feeling but i like apex a lot it's it's yeah. dope. it's dope i checked it out it's got a good format and i think that a lot i mean they don't need to grab the whole market right they just need to to find that niche of people that no longer want to have, have involvement with centralized exchanges um, and I think decentralized exchanges are going to be something to pay a really close attention to, um, over the next few years. That's just my personal opinion, Apex being one of them. Um, you know, on, I, I want to get to this Haas thing. This guy tickled me with, with what he said about <laughs> He Coin. did what? He tickled Wait, me. when you were in Texas? No. Well. Did you laugh? Oh, Was it under your arms or your feet? I get it. Well, you know what? When he walked into the room. I was so excited. I stood up and I almost knocked myself up on the sound boom <laughs> immediately. And then he handed nice. me a t-shirt that was way too small. And I was just like, yes, thank you. And then I went to the corner, and, you know, I did the interview with Ben. Oh, that's that one shirt you wear? Yeah. <laughs> the the Schmedium. Yeah. I won't, I'm, you know. Love I'm, it. I'm proud of that Schmedium shirt. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're funny. I'll, I won't be able to fit into it for very much longer. I'm able to eat again. You so. already don't fit into it. Well, much less so. You know what I mean? Uh, um, yeah, he's a really cool guy, very intelligent. And, <laughs> you know, I have a lot of Cardano just uh, letting you know oh, that out of the gates. Um, <laughs> Razzmatazz. Love it. Love it. That's I will, good. Never, That's I will good. never reveal the secrets. Karate, um, I don't day trade. I'm more swing like month to month. I don't really day trade anymore. Yeah. It's not for me. It's for this guy. He's, he's better at yeah, it. Yeah. I, I like the five second chart. That's the fact. When I walk into your office, I, it gives me anxiety. It, like, the, it, this past, the past 10 days, I am eight for nine on the five second chart. Yeah. Nice, dude. I mean, pop, pop, pop. you're doing pretty good. I'm not, you know, it, <laughs> it, I just don't have uh, the, I don't want to pay attention to the charts that much. I've definitely just traded cycles um and trade it off of i mean not really trade it i just buy tokens i, I mean, think five seconds is a cycle five seconds is a cycle <laughs> i don't know i mean I, I don't think that's i wouldn't consider that a cycle. You know, that's, I, I stopped leverage trading when i was looking back at my trades and my best trade was a mistake yeah i, uh, <laughs> I had a random order set like 40 percent under under the current price and i like went to sleep woke up and the price wicked down to it, mm. and then it popped what? back up. So in about five seconds, I made about three hundred dollars. Nice. That was my best trade ever, and I didn't even mean to do it. So I'm like, yeah, this ain't <laughs> for me. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to do. That's this how it happens sometimes, man. But I don't when know. I'm looking at the chart, five hour, four hour. Okay, yeah. these yeah. these looks good. All right, yeah. one hour looks good. All right, 20, <laughs> 20 minute looks good. I'm gonna enter along, and it goes down. Well, that's yeah. the thing that what you have to understand is that, especially like even with indicators like Market Cipher, Lux Algo, people are seeing the same exact thing you're seeing, mm. and you have to take that into account. If you look at something and it looks like a long, you always have to second guess, play devil's advocate totally. with your gut, totally. and kind of make like and really zoom in on lower term time frames and kind of look for where it makes sense it's going to swing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And also a big thing with like like leverage like scalp trading yeah. um like you know a lot of my trades last between maybe 10 to 30 minutes or if it's really going good i'll move up my stop loss and, profits on and then ride it out is that a one minute chart that you're doing or a three minute uh it depends it or depends once once it goes once it starts to run i'll like yeah. go to the two minute chart okay um but I, I normally open trades from like the 30 second or the 10 second chart. But um, but no, so, 
That's uh, too yeah, much. Don't take my advice. But here's That's the horrible. thing. Here's the thing. I played a I played a lot of poker in my life. Okay, yeah. and I know it's like if like you go to a um a poker game. And you buy in for a thousand dollars, and in five minutes you have two hundred dollars left in front of you. A lot of people would just like freak out or whatever. Like I know how to stomach these losses. Like mm. I know how to when my trades open and I'm down like two hundred dollars. I know when to press the eject button or when to hold on to my seat mm. and ride it out. And that being able to deal with those swings is the most important part of leverage yeah. trading. That's a fact. I you want to play some poker then? I saw anytime. I saw a funny tweet today. Where it's like, <laughs> no. All right. So the tweet, and I'll kind of keep it like PG. Um, trading with like a pretty gangster. Pretty gangster. That's right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Like a like a fake uh, account to like try to leverage trade is like porn, and <laughs> trading with actual money is like sex. Yeah, wow. dude, using um like well, test you have to get you have to good. fill it out in different situations well yeah you have to yeah. get in order to figure out how, to, how it works a oh bit get wow. i know femix a couple other ones have test nets where you can go on yeah. and then actually leverage trade with like a thousand fake dollars and like go there and mess around for a couple weeks just like try to turn that thousand dollars into 1200 try to turn that into 15 and just mess with it and then or another thing i like to do when i was first starting off i would like get it in a trade for a hundred bucks. And if I could like get it to 120, I tell myself, Oh, if that was $10,000, I'd have 1200 right now. Yeah. So I like kind of like play those little mental games with myself and then kind of work it up from there. Crypto Thorn Rob. So do we all have poker backgrounds? I was a D so many of us. Do. I absolutely have Wait, a poker Allie, background. D Gen. No, not really, but uh, uh, I feel like you do. I mean, I like poker, that. but I, I mean, Brian, for example, Definitely. like, yo, he is really a savage jet poker. He's crazy. Ben and AJ. I absolutely have a poker background, and I don't talk about it much. My dad was a pro poker player. Wow. Really? Yeah. Hmm. And uh, I was party poker. It came out when I was like 15, yes, 16 years old. I have a story about that too. Oh my God. I, I bought a gym and my dad came downstairs and like, what the hell is going on here? Where did you get all this money? Like, <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So um, when I was 14, uh, I played like cash games with my grandma and my Aunt Marion and stuff. My Aunt Marion's actually in the hospital. Uh, if you have a moment to pray for her, please do. But anyway, um, so I begged my dad for my, uh, for my 14th birthday. I said, dad, like, just just put just put thirty dollars on this party poker account. Like we'll just put it in your name because we both have the name Alan Pleasanton. So mm -hmm. we'll put the account in your name or whatever. And I go and and he did it for my birthday. He put thirty dollars in the party poker account. Yeah. And I played and I played and I played and I played <laughs> and I played. And then I was like, hey dad, look. And I had eight hundred dollars from a thirty dollar buy in in like. 10 days or something like that nice. Look what I and can then do. um <laughs> yeah and, and then my dad was like dang and then like basically i would just grind as my dad forever and then yeah. um eventually my dad he took the profits and then he didn't like he didn't give me any of any of the money but we went dirt bike racing every weekend Thank so we put it into my motocross fund but that was that's my party poker story and my last name is nice. not right <laughs> well that now they know said, your name do you think charles hoskinson's gonna take a gamble on coindesk Thoughts. Tune in now. Oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Got him. Got off the rails there, my All bad. All right, then. So, it wasn't my fault that time. Yeah. So Hoskinson said Coindesk appeared to be overpriced at its $200 million asking price um, and would decide after reviewing the firm's books. And uh, basically, Hos Hoskinson said it appears overpriced, blah, blah, blah. Um, also pointed out that the readers could have a new way of interacting with new stories through non-fungible tokens. Now, this is a super cool idea. We kind of touched on it on a live stream. He said it would be really cool if each story could be viewed as a living object. Um, the Cardano founder gave several reasons why he thought that Coindesk was overpriced at 200 mil. Um, it would make more sense to invest between 5 to 10 million bucks. So, man, he is just a savage. I is Razzmatazz joking, or is this a new story we don't know? Razzmatazz? What does he say? DCG bought it for 500 Is that real? Let's check they the do internet. Yeah, let's check the it. internet. There's nothing wrong. I think they already own oh, it. No, they already own oh, it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes so much sense. That I makes do so want much to sense. say, though, that was a good call, if Alex. Charles Hoskinson does buy it, and he'll be able to talk about Cardano more, I think that's much needed in the industry. I don't think Cardano has enough marketing. Yeah, I agree. 
I don't know. I mean, I don't think I, I'm meeting the guy. He's, I don't think he's going to even want to, he's, it's not going to be weighted towards Cardano. I can tell you that much just yeah. from, but I feel like he'll bring it to a fair playing yeah, field. Because, absolutely. Uh, just an example, open C they had like BNB, Arbitrum, Optimum, mm-hmm. uh, Clayton, yeah. um, Solana, Polygon, Ethereum. Yeah. Where's Cardano? It's mm-hmm. a top 10 coin. Yeah. There are NFTs on Cardano. It makes zero sense. I I don't get. And then like you know at the like the top where it gives you like prices on different news uh, sites. Mm-hmm. Cardano's not there, but wow. they'll have like XRP. They'll have Dogecoin. They'll have Shiba Inu. Yeah. Like how are those more legitimate than Cardano? I I couldn't agree mind. more. And the funny thing <laughs> is like you know I like uh, in my research for writing and stuff I talk on the phone to people who work for a lot of coins like if we're doing a, a coin review on like near or whatever i will find i will call someone from near and talk to them and normally they'll hand me to someone fairly high up the ladder and it is actually scary to me yeah. how many people i have talked to on coins that you know coins in the top 30 right that have terrible marketing that like the someone like third on the ladder on the phone with me telling me about how bad their marketing is Dude, and it scott, scares me randall scott cardano is the minivan of the crypto world great utility not well, sexy can we talk about a throwback here real quickly yes uh, dude what was mine say uh what about eToro delisting cardano oh. uh, cardano it had, the a borderline had no volume for cardano so them delisting it was completely irrelevant yeah i mean you know you'll have situations if no one's trading it on that platform it's yeah. not gonna be traded that's i uh, mean also <laughs> the guy who started etoro wasn't he one of the original founders slash investors in ethereum i don't know uh, that. actually let me look that up i think there's a direct connection there okay thanks what for is, the sub red flag gaming yeah, yeah welcome red flag welcome Love welcome it. red and flag thanks. is a race restart uh does aj see nft i see hmm. nft what's the nfts you got CNFT JPEG junkies. Ooh. That's it. That's my CNFT. That's it? Yep. I was looking at Claymation and junkies. Clayna- but... Claymation. Oh, you got one? No, I'm just looking at it. I I'm, like the good Charlotte I'm Claynations. So, you know, if I, I were to get a CNFT, I would get a Claynation. When's your birthday, Taco? Yeah. August. Okay. Maybe I'll get you a junk uh C- uh Claynation you for you for your birthday. A Claynation for your birthday? You want a Claynation, Taco? Would you take one? <laughs> Hell yeah. Dude. All right. With then. the floor? Like five hundred bucks? No. Yeah. It seems like more than that. More than that? I'll get I'll get you a uh, maybe the, the good Charlotte in. one. Yeah. Yeah, those are about twelve, thirteen hundred data. Oh yeah. That's not bad. That's not better. bad. I can I can pull that. Yeah. Speaking of NFTs, let's check this out. Let's check this out. This is cool. This is from DGen Gang. You'll appreciate this, boys. Um bar fights, the web three fight club tournament. Now I'm gonna press play, but everyone be quiet. So it Hold doesn't... on, I gotta hit a yeah. button and you know? shit. All right, you're good. Street Fighter game. Yeah, imagine if you use any any of the few on. Wow. My junkies. <laughs> now I absolutely cool. love this. That's fun. pretty cool. That looks really fun, doesn't it? DJ, like, when he saw it last night, got really excited. Did he? I <laughs> yeah. mean, it's cool. You can you have cross uh, cross chain abilities. You know what I mean? Like, wh- what do you think about this, Taco? Do you think that the community is going to be big on this thing? Yeah, you- I was talking to TJ this morning about this too. Yeah. Uh, if if it opens up where like I can use my clay nation or I can use my board ape, I don't have a board ape, or yeah. my mutant or my cool cat, and I could go against his JPEG junkie. Right. And these are all like kind of like arcade games. And I feel like that's where it's gonna start. It's gonna yeah. be like these uh like these flash type uh, indie games where it's gonna get more momentum, more people playing them, mm-hmm. and then you're gonna get people like the board apes with the other side with the big metaverse integration, good graphics. Yep. I think it's just going to start getting building up, getting better and better over time. And this is a perfect start. 
Flash is dead? Isn't it? Remember that website, mm-hmm. addictinggames.com? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The best. Yeah. The maybe, best ever. Maybe the NFT world can solve its infighting on the, the game spectrum here. Load your NFT. I think that's them. more... It's the gamers that don't like NFTs, not the yeah. NFTs that don't like yeah. the gamers. Yeah, exactly. that's true. Yeah. That's exactly. true. Well, Gamer there's, gamers it's hate weird NFT. Me. There's I mean, infighting between CNFT people and XRP NFT people and you know what I mean? So What XRP NFT? XRP has <laughs> NFTs. <laughs> I know, know that. that. I think uh, Ben has a uh, X Punk stuck as his profile picture on Twitter for like a two a two weeks now. Is he? Why is it stuck? stuck? Oh, he uh, can't change yeah, it. Yeah, I think he tried to change it and it didn't didn't change. Oh. Shout out but, to uh, Who Needs Slack. AJ, I have to give you credit. You got me on the algo train. Welcome, Choo Choo Choo, bro. Um, let me know <laughs> in the chat. Is anybody playing Dookie Dash? And what's your high score? I Dude. just. I yeah. just got 100k on Justin's account for him. Nice. The uh, nice. Dookie Dash is pretty cool looking. You, um, you know the. Board- did you see how much ETH that they have traded already? Over, I think eleven thousand. It's only been two days. What? Here. I saw it was over a million dollars in the first hour. Yeah, absolutely insane. Yeah. Secondary is let's, going. Let's crazy. check this out. Was it as insane as your high score? Oh, you yeah. did pretty good, Taco. Weren't you like in the top 20? You're like 26? Within the first like 30 minutes of the game opening up, I was like ranked 26 in the world. Nice. Now yeah. I'm like 4,000. Ace is jealous of uh, uh, TJ's wife. He's not gay, but he's kind of jealous of TJ's that, wife. How does that, that work? That, that's kind of awkward. I don't understand that. Yeah, it's kind of backwards. Um, what's um, <laughs> don't be, what's don't a be sewer mean. pass? So the sewer pass, uh, all board ape and mutant apes were able to claim them. And depending on if you had a mutant, you got tier one. If you have a mutant and a kennel, tier two. If you have a board ape, tier three. And if you have a board ape and a kennel, tier four. Tier one gets you no like multiplier. Tier four gets you like a 30% multiplier for yeah. your score. Yeah. And they have like an active leaderboard. And the person at the end of this three weeks, the highest score, they get this key. Uh, no one is really sure what this key is for or what it does, but I'm estimating it's going to resell no intended, but. <laughs> for over a million dollars. I feel like this one key, only one person <laughs> in the world is getting it. It's going to go if Wait, they want to sell it for the, over a million. And uh, Justin has a kennel and an ape, right? He has, so he has bo- the highest multiplier. No, he has a board ape, so he was able to get tier three. Mm. And he had a mutant, so he was able to get tier one. Okay. And he already flipped his tier one for a two ETH profit. But he Ooh. doesn't have a kennel. He doesn't have a kennel? No. It's uh. Bungalow Bill. We should. We should get Joel set up on some Web3 games. Yeah, I, I actually wanted to talk to Joel to see if uh, he wanted to play some Dookie Dash. I thought the Dookie Dash game looked pretty good. I mean, we can check out. I'll play we it. have a, a video of it here, I think think um it's and it, the coolest part and which i feel like is gonna yeah, go. start to revolutionize the nft uh, industry is these interactive mints that are actually games mm-hmm. so depending on how good you are it's going to pretty much equal what you get to mint or like what you're able to claim after the game is done and it moves pretty smooth like i mean i liked the gameplay now let me ask you this talker was the outage due to uh usage like overload did uh, they have too many users on there like what because i saw the outage yeah, posts all over night, the place i think it around like maybe eight or nine i think it went down for a hmm. short period of time um we got a first time chat we got a johnny jackhammer asking best place to go learn to trade with explanations of everything what do you think? Frankie Candles. Yeah, Frankie, yeah. Candles. Frankie Candles. And also, for sure. you should follow AJ on Twitter yep. as well. The BitLab Academy. He's putting out some, uh, we got some uh, really good uh, description on BitLab Academy. Mm-hmm. Frankie Candles, always. I mean, I think Frankie is one of the best TA in the business. Totally. Um, in my top three. I think he's okay. T- my top three for TA in no order is Frankie, Cryptoface, and Gareth Soloway. Yeah? Yep. Okay. I yeah. honestly mean that too. Not not gonna, because Frankie and I are friends and share an office. He's actually in my top three. I'm I not agree kidding. with you, and I'm also going to add Jason Casper. Okay. Yeah. Casper fair, fair, is good. Fair. You know, I was going to take a comparison picture, uh, who's got the better cock, and compare my rooster to Jason Casper's <laughs> rooster. Yeah. Need more context there for a yeah. second. Wow. <laughs> they're, both, <laughs> they're both really into chickens. Yeah, he's got a pretty good looking rooster. So, But I, I heard some of Wait, Jason Wait, he's got Cas- a pretty good looking what? 
Got a good looking cock, so yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna pull mine out and see what it's it. The basement. Yeah, we're gonna see wow. how we compare up, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. It was pretty cool to see the the game run smooth. There's a lot of usage. There's some people on Twitter like, I'm gonna pay my 12 year old ten thousand dollars if he wins this key for me, and they're like kind of letting their kids play the game that they bought all and so put. they're admitting to child labor. Okay. Yeah, basically, you know, but it's the new thing, and I mean, it's what, all child the, labor. Yeah, it's all the buzz <laughs> these days. You know, well, what I'm saying? chill. Bro, yeah. chill, yeah, chill, um, Drew. chill, bro. What? Everyone loves cobalt, don't you? The electric vehicles push. I mean, come on, that's where electric vehicles come hey, from. Hey, Drew, uh, before we go, can you pull yeah. up the the tour dates for the book tour? Oh, sure. Don't you know? Most don't of my you know. Just, don't you know. The fair don't warning, you know. just so y'all know where I'm coming from here. I uh, most of my family's from Fargo, North Dakota. So love that um, show. There you go. Let's see here. Fargo. Ace yeah, wants to know what happened in the Daily Hit Network vlog. It got shelved. Yeah, it got shelved for a little while. We might bring it back. Yeah. Maybe. It's a demand kind of thing. My agent Someday. didn't want me going on screen for free, so we had to shelf it. You know? Plus, Frankie was Your the main agent. videographer, and now right. he does Frankie Candles. Right. All right, we got the book tour pulled All up right, here. So t at 4.30 today, uh, me, Ben, Jen, and Aaron, we're hitting the road. We're getting on a plane. Um, and we're going on this book tour here. So basically, if you, uh, you know, want to come on this book tour, all you have to do is buy Ben's book, Catching Up to Crypto, or mm. price alert, dag at six cents. Oh, yeah. Um, and, um, or if you buy the book and it doesn't come in, just show the receipt and you'll get in. Or and if you definitely want to go uh, reserve a spot on Eventbrite, I, th I think as long as you have your receipt or the book, you don't need to do that, but we would appreciate it. Um, you know, we're starting, we're hitting it off, uh, tomorrow, San Francisco, it's actually San Jose, uh, uh, LA, Vegas, Phoenix, Miami, Denver, Austin, Chicago, Minneapolis, Boston, DC. My dad will be in DC. Very hey. cool. And hey. then we're taking off for a couple of weeks and then we're going, uh, home, home stop in Atlanta and then my hometown, Philadelphia, and then New York city. Mm. So if you guys, uh, would love to, uh, meet myself, Ben, um, you know, get your book signed, uh, hear a little speech, uh, you know, I'm going to like kind of talk for like five, 10 minutes and then bring Ben onto the stage. And then, we, uh, he's going to, you know, kind of just, and then it's a meet and greet. So you have a chance to get your book signed, shake his hand, ask him a question, stuff like that. So if any of you guys want to come to the book tour, we'd love to see you. Yes. Um, it's crazy. It's ever since I announced that I was going on the book tour, actually taco was going to go on the bookstore, but they they're launching uh Vumeo and stuff. So taco has to stay here and work on that. So I, I'm yep. filling in for him. I so, um, do I get to meet AJ if I go on the book tour? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, so so um, definitely it's crazy. Ever since I said I was going, the responses I've got, like, oh, I'll see you in here or I'll see you there, and it, it's crazy. So if any of you guys haven't know, the book, book tour is starting tomorrow in San Jose. Would love to see you guys. Um, I'm, I'm just really excited to hit the road. Uh, a lot of airplanes, a lot of, a lot of cities. Um, Going to catch up with a lot of friends. Uh, my sister, Tori, will be in Colorado, which is cool. I'm just really excited and looking forward to the whole thing. Um. Yeah, that that's what's going on. Book tour, can't wait. Uh, to finish the show off, Dag wait, is hold on, hold going on, hold on an absolute tangent. So um, go back to the book tour page. Oh yeah, uh, right. <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Pull it up, biscuit Jesus. I need you. Yeah, in sometime my life. today would be oh, great. You want me to hit the button. <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. And then uh, bring art. Uh, wait, I, hold on. I think I can do this. Hold on. How do I air horn? <laughs> Don DeMarco. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, what are you looking for? And then scroll down. Are you I just, telling me what to do in my yes. life? Yes. So I just noticed this. There's a, there's a couple little things there. One pre order book gets access to the book tour meetup. Okay. Yep. Five access, five gets access to the tour and one free month of Bitlock Academy. That's big. Okay. That's, that's pretty bullish. dope. That's good. 25 access to the tour gets you one year. And 100 plus nice. gets you launched with Bitpoy and team what? and tour of Hidden yeah. Studios. Nice. So you I got to buy 100 out. books. Love yes, it. you do. Wow. Love it. Dude, I want to meet them. Well, I mean, if you buy 100 book books, then you can, you know, uh, orange pill 100 people before the next bull run hits, and then they'll like go. it a lot more. Can 100 True. people in America even read? <sighs> Good question. <laughs> Don't you drag I'm logic into this. I'm actually excited. After the... Uh, the last stop in New York. I'm actually flying to Toronto. Yeah. Uh, if you guys know anything about the uh, battle rap industry, Pat's day recently uh, died. He got stabbed. Really sad story. He was like one of my favorites of all time. And um, 
and they're doing like a tribute battle for him in Toronto because he lived in Canada. It's like with King of the Dot and Organic and stuff like that. And um, uh, my favorite battle rapper, Hollow to Don, has actually hooked me up with a stage pass so I could go on stage um, nice. at the show. This is actually his clothing line here. It's like loyalty over money. Um, I'm like super bullish on battle rap. I like grew up like in hip hop and stuff like that. So it's cool to like kind of go there, support Pat and his family and stuff. So just shout out to Pat's day and his family. Uh, if you don't like, if you don't know about battle rap, definitely just take a deep dive and search Pat's day and you're going to have like a really great time. Cause he's, he was hilarious and it was a big blow to the industry. So I just wanted to give a shout out to Pat's day. RIP bro. Get off my lawn. Okay. <laughs> We're going to wrap it up here. I uh, really appreciate you guys joining us here, but um, finishing this up, Dag's up, up crazy. Dag's about to go nuts. So, uh, wow, Drew called know, one. Yeah, I call many things. You know, um, also called the COVID was going to be downgraded to a flu. So that happened too. <laughs> Uh, I but say that, apparently. At, <laughs> on that note thank you for joining us everyone and i hope you have a fantastic day are we raiding joel is he still dressed up no, like a hentai yeah, person I'm still traumatized from us, that. So. okay okay hold on find me... someone good like maybe dude, that, dude, that dgen dude, guy is pretty cool here we just raid somebody completely hey random. there's joel Late morning show. Late morning show at three. The late morning show. On hit network gaming. At three. <laughs> Should we just? Do, do you guys like just want to raid poker stars? Let's go. Yeah, raid poker stars. <laughs> Let's like, go. Check this raise is... the devil, baby. We're going this to raid poker stars. And talk Have poker. Have a great weekend, guys. USDAJ. Yeah, I will be out for the next two weeks. But uh, hit me up on Twitter. Make sure you don't stick yeah. around. Take do, care. Trade. And learn things. Have enjoy. Fun. Bye. Bye. Peace. Bye.